Hello. Today's reading is a list of names. It's the genealogy of Jesus. Or rather, it's Joseph's genealogy, since, as it says at the end, Joseph was married to Mary, who was Jesus' mother. But as we know, God was his father. I'm not going to read the list to you. You can find it in Matthew's Gospel. It's right at the very beginning. In chapter 1, verses 1 to 17. Why include the genealogy in the Gospels, since it's not actually Jesus's? Well, I think there are two reasons. The first is that the Jews of Jesus's day wouldn't have known the details about his birth. They would have seen Jesus as Joseph's son. To them, the genealogy marked Jesus out as a descendant of King David, and therefore as a candidate for the Messiah. Including it records the importance that it would have had to the Jews of Jesus' time. The second reason for including it is that it tells us about Joseph. Have you ever stopped to think about what we know about Joseph? We talk about Mary quite a lot, and she's present throughout his life. She's even present at the crucifixion. But Joseph is only mentioned as part of the nativity story, and also in one other instance when Jesus was 12, he stayed in the temple as his parents started on their journey back home. By the time of the wedding at Cana, at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, Jesus turns water into wine, but Joseph is not mentioned. One traditional explanation is that Joseph was much older than Mary, and so died between these two events, but we just don't know. But consider this. God must have chosen Joseph every bit as carefully as he chose Mary. He had to be someone who would care for a child that he knew wasn't his. To bring Jesus up with love, teaching him how to live and how to behave. He had the opportunity to completely ruin God's plans by being a bully or by ruining Jesus' upbringing. But he didn't. Jesus was able to save us, in part because of Joseph. So, what about that genealogy? It contains some interesting names. There's Abraham, who's commended for his faith. There are good kings like David, who's described as a man after God's own heart, and Hezekiah, who brought the people back to God. And there are bad kings as well, like Ahaz and Manasseh. Look them up if you're interested. There are also four women mentioned, and they're all interesting as well. The first is Tamar, who pretended to be a prostitute and seduced her father-in-law. She had her reasons, but you can't call her an, an outstanding example. The second is Rahab. Now, the only other mention of a woman named Rahab is the prostitute who hid the spies just before Joshua attacked Jericho. We appear to be establishing a pattern here, don't we? The fourth isn't mentioned by name, but is described as having been Uriah's wife. So this is Bathsheba, 
who committed adultery with David and whose husband was murdered on David's orders. So I don't think you can describe them as the best examples of people. But I did say there were four names and I've only mentioned three. The third in the list is Ruth, whose story can be found in the book of, well, Ruth of course. She's a foreigner. They're all women who you would have wanted to have left conveniently out of your genealogy if you were a Jew at that time. Not that the Jews of that time would include women in a genealogy. Yet they're the only women listed. And there are several men who you would rather leave out as well. But despite these somewhat dodgy ancestors, God still chose Joseph. That's a message for us. Whatever you may feel your ancestors may have done, it doesn't stop God from working through you. It didn't stop God from choosing Joseph. And whatever you may feel that you've done wrong, God can still choose your children. So over the next few days, as we celebrate Jesus' birth, let's remember that he was born to save us all. And that all includes everyone, whoever you are and whoever your ancestors were. All you have to do is say yes.